very bright. Probably some fishing bit of plastic. I'll take that. Maybe we can use it for something. That's a piece of bottleneck, I'd say. It's a beautiful colour. Birds are being very vocal. an igloo? I don't think I can so I'll leave it. Tiny piece of green. That is worn. That one's cute. Might be usable. Might take it. There's another piece. Well-worn amber piece. There's another one too. Letters on it, I think, or numbers, or just marks. <laughs> well, this is supposed to be one of the best beaches in the country for sea glass. I haven't seen much evidence of it yet. But there is a piece. I'd show you in the sun, but there is no sun. <laughs> There's lots of slag around. Here's a piece. Here's a piece. Oh, that's a, what's that? Is it a bit of plastic? <laughs> yes. Oh well, we'll take that off the beach. Pretty blue piece of slag. Slag. Well, that's a nice sight. Tiny wedge of blue. I'll be taking that one. That's a beautiful bit. Looks like a wing. of a butchered bone which has been worn smooth sort of a nugget and a piece of stoneware pot I'd say I will. You don't want any blue in it though, do you? <laughs> I don't know where all this slag has come from, but it's so blue. Talking about blue, I found this beautiful piece, which is very worn and wedge-like. 
and it's bluey grey. Some textured, which I won't be taking. And look at this, I won't be taking it. But look at this top of a bottle, look at the beautiful colour. It's very tiny, but it is green and the tiny pieces are the most useful. And it's a worn tiny piece, so I shall be taking it. If I can keep hold of it. Piece of... Oh, it's got a name. It used to be like bar from tiles. I don't think it's UV. Pretty. It's a shell. What kind of shell is that, Kate? It's a pipe stem. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it's not a shell, it's because no, it's, it's pink. pink. Oh. It's pink pipe stem. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't have my glasses. I sillily. Sillily is not a word. I st stupidly left them at home. But hey, pink pipe stem. <laughs> well, that's. Uh, that's confusing me even more now. Huh? Well, I'll keep that. What's that? Is it just stone? Olive piece. Oops. Oops. <laughs> it's really nice though, because this is the first piece of fab um, plastic I've found on the on this beach. So that's really nice. Makes a nice change. these can't tell if they're cockles or winkles I think they might be cockles but they're all encrusted yeah barnacles all over them piece of blue glass could be from an ornament or something it's quite pretty I might take it might be quite good for the crafting something. Like a hat almost, like a gnome hat. <laughs> There's a few sea sponge fossils around without the hole. They are very pleasing though. I'm sorry about the lawnmower in the background. <laughs> Another one, bigger one. There are supposed to be fossils here. Well, here's a fossil. <laughs> This place is very strange. I found the piece of pipe stem, yeah? And oh, now look. Oh goodness. It's old, it's got, it's probably like 40s, 30s, what does it say on it? Minimum content, six fluid ounces. 
Canada Dry brackets UK Limited. Well, how old is that? I'll we'll have to Google, Google it. Canada Dry. I mean, Canada Dry is still made today, but I imagine oh, it? it's like um, ginger beer. Well, age-wise, when did it begin? Because this is quite, looks like quite an old bottle. Nope. Oh. <laughs> ah, the bits of pottery are getting bigger. Maybe we're getting closer to the source. There's one over here. A bit of ridge pottery. Or base of a stoneware pot. Not ready to wear just a plain stoneware pot. Lots and lots of oysters here too. I'm on the cockles. Milk bottlenecks. Another milk bottleneck. Push them down. It's sharp. They haven't been broken for long. Bottleneck with its cork still in. Broken this side, but. Well, maybe. It's a very odd environment. I might not be finding very much, but it's a crazy, crazy place. I realised that it's broken. But it's made a very good E. Fossil bead, sponge fossil. Brilliant, they're always good. smooth at all. It's a blue piece of glass. <laughs> well, that was... <laughs> <laughs> well, it says it's on the sea glass map. I There's a map for good sea glass beaches in the country, and that is on there. I think it's all gone. Yes. I think mm -hmm. possibly maybe there was stuff there once upon a time, but mm -hmm. there isn't any more. No, <laughs> not really. But I mean, there were some big, there were some big bits though, weren't there? It was like they just come out. Yeah. Mm. Of wherever it was coming from. And it was appropriately named. Yes. All Hallows. Mm-hmm. For Halloween. Yep. And I've got some interesting history of All Hallows. Um, it come or who All Hallows comes from the Old English ho, meaning a heel, sharp projecting piece of ground, and Halga as a saint, therefore a spur of land, with the affix from the Church of All Saints. 
So nothing to do with Halloween, Halloween. at all. <laughs> Although Halloween was called All Hallows before. Yes, All Hallows Eve. Yeah. Um, the Romans used the nearby Yantlet Creek for trade. Oh. So apparently after the First World War, the Kent and London County Councils planned to redevelop All Hallows to rival that of Blackpool. According to newspaper reports at the time, the amusement park was to be four times bigger than the one at the Northern Resort. There would also be a zoo, yachting centre and a lido with artificial waves, the first such pool in Europe. The development, which would have covered more than two and a half square miles, had plans to include a holiday camp, restaurants, theatres and cinemas. Unfortunately, due primarily to the outbreak of the Second World War, the councils eventually abandoned the project. Wow, that's weird, because it's yeah. a very strange place, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, there's no not much there. Well, it's a holiday park. Mm -hmm. However, All Hallows on Sea Railway Station opened on the 16th of May 1932 in preparation for thousands of expected visitors to the resort. In the first year of opening, the line carried 6,500 passengers, much to the encouragement of the railway, who proceeded with in improvements to the station. Sadly, that level of demand was never to be repeated, and the station closed in 1961. Oh. Well, that's really sad. I know. That's really, really sad. Really sad. And then, on the morning of the 15th of October 1940, pilot officer J.W. Lund bailed out of his Spitfire R6642 following an altercation with a Messerschmitt BF-109. The aircraft ca crashed on the shoreline of the River Medway near All Hallows at 11.50am. The Navy rescued the pilot, although his aircraft remained a wreck on the tidal mudflats of the village until the summer of 1998. Oh. Oh, maybe that was his ginger beer then. Maybe that was his... <laughs> pipe? Oh, well, pipes have, in the they 40s? Wouldn't, they wouldn't have had pipes no. in the 40s, no. Well, they would have, just not clay. Not, not clay pipes. <laughs> yeah, that is all of the history of All Hallows <laughs> contained in three short chapters. <laughs> About Canada Dry. Um, started in 1904? Yeah. Did I say 1904? Yeah, 1904. Um, doesn't just do ginger beer, but that's, ginger ale, but that's what it's famous for. And it went worldwide in 1930. So this, so. that's what I said, 30s, 40s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because in the 60s it merged with another company. Right. I mean, it's nice. I mean, it's nice, it makes a nice tea light holder. It's all smooth. Mm. Very frosted. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Got some good, exciting mudlarking coming up soon, yeah. hopefully. So, not much to say other than don't necessarily trust the sea glass map. No. When it tells you what are good, good beaches. Don't trust I mean, it was a nice beach. It but... was. Well, it was a strange beach. Mm. <laughs> the birds were cool. Lots of geese, yeah. yeah. So yeah, thank you as always for watching, everyone that likes, comments and subscribes, our brilliant Patreons, anyone who donates in any other way, thank you very much, and we will see you soon, hopefully with some mudlarking. <laughs> Bye! Bye.